Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Strategos Nick channel. I am Strategos Nick, and today we're going to be playing some Hearts of Iron 3, their finest hour, um, with no mods, just vanilla. <clears throat> I have a uh, counters mod, but for the purpose of this let's play, I'm not going to be using it just because everyone who's watching this probably only has vanilla. And um, they probably won't understand what the counters symbolize. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, so, I want to play as Germany, but not in a historical story. I want to play a custom game as Germany. And the only difference between a custom game and a historical start is that you basically get to set up the country, okay? So, instead of doing something stupid like building the Maginot Line you can in France, you can instead focus on your infrastructure, your IC, or troops, or stuff like that. You can build units and make everything more efficient. That's what I like to do as Germany, and pretty much every country I play as, just because it gives it a bit of a more realistic feel if you were actually in charge of the country. You know, I know the whole part, point of the historical start is you're taking control of Germany in 1936, but this way it is a little, it is a little bit easier. Uh, but at the same time, I also don't see it as cheating, technically. Uh, now, um, I see a lot of Let's Plays on YouTube of people invading the Soviet Union and then just getting pushed back. In a historical start, in a custom game, and even in a historical start, I can um, get dis defeat the Soviet Union before the end of 1941. And um, I just want to kind of you know, do this game to show you how you can do it. Now, I do have to say one thing. I have partisans disabled, okay? Now, if you invade, if for all of you who know how to play, uh, or have played Hearts of Iron 3, when you invade a country and you don't annex them, you conquer them. There's a difference. Annexing means that um, it is your territory and that the country that you have invaded is wiped out of existence. If the country becomes a government in exile, the uh, allies of the country can build resistance units and place them in the country. I'm not disabling the resistance units, I'm disabling the um, uh, rebels, the uh, people. There, there are Polish rebels that rise up, uh, black units, uh, black counters on the map, that come and take over your country and just cause a big havoc. I have disabled them, they are worthless in this game, they do absolutely nothing, they just cause nothing but a frustration, and I recommend you do the same thing. Just look it up on the uh, Paradox Interactive forums and it'll show you how to do it. But today we're going to start off playing as Germany, and we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we're going to set up this game. Okay. <clears throat> this is wait for it to load up. So first of all, there's nothing much to do here. Uh, if you're not the leader of a faction, you can just leave a faction, or if you're not in any faction, you can spend diplomatic points to align to a certain faction. We're just going to lower our neutrality. We really don't need to, but it's just always nice. For our text, we're going to clear everything. Okay. Oh, done with that. We're not going to focus on militia at all, so we're only going to get the base needed to actually recruit some infantry divisions, and we're going to max out this text. We're going to get mountain and marines, arctic. And not more for equipment. And we want to get motorized infantry since we are, since we do use that very heavily in our armored units. Okay. We're gonna move on to industry next. Education, we want to get up, that up to date. Just get m these texts up to date, really. And yes, even these industry texts in the right here, the uh, supply production, all this stuff, we want to get these up to date. Because when Britain and France start raiding, uh, your convoys, you're not going to have any resources, really. I'm getting radar, too. The whole reason why... I'm also getting engineer raised. The whole reason why uh, Germany lost the Battle of Britain was because they did not have radar, so... Yeah. And we're just going to max out these texts. I also like to use anti-tanks. You know, a big part of why people can't uh, play as Germany is because they don't know about unit composition. Um... Unit composition is rather important in this game. I, I guess I should talk about that later when we get to the actual unit building phase, so I'm just going to shut up about that. We're going to focus on tech. So we don't need submarines. I don't care. We're just going to get destroyers for the uh, naval bases and landing craft and light cruisers because light cruisers are better. And we're not going to focus on this yet. We're going to get fighter technologies first. And now it's very unorthodox for Germany to play a naval game, but 
in this let's play I'm going to show you how you can get a, a decent navy that can go up against a British home fleet and allow you to invade. You're not going to win every engagement, and you're certainly not going to be able to take them on worldwide, but you're going to be able to knock out Britain. Let's get those nuke techs up. And then this get level one of all these, level two of this. And because you want superior fi firepower, this allows you to get more brigades in your divisions. That's rather important. Especially in the later game. Even though, realistically speaking, it's kind of a waste. I'd still like I still like to have it. Our naval techs, we're not gonna be focusing on sea lane defense at all. We really don't need it. But I mean you can get it if you want. But in this, in this, I'm not going to be using it at all. We're just going to our light cruiser and carrier techs, our spotting and basing. We're going to be getting level one of all these. Since we're going to be using uh, naval bombers, we're going to be getting these two and most of these. And we're going to be using tactical bombers and strategic bombers as well. We're uh, Germany's a really air-heavy nation, so you want to focus on that. Yeah, basically, Germany needs to focus on everything. Some nations only need to focus on, a, on land, some on air. Well, actually, no nations will need to focus on air specifically, but some nations only need to focus on the um, uh, navy, navy. Germany, if you want to conquer the world as Germany, which is very possible and very easy to do if you know how, you need to get these decks. When I say need to, it just makes the game easier, but... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like to have it. So, now we're going to get to our unique building phase. We're just going to get rid of these to have nice even numbers. <coughs> I really don't need escorts. They're pretty much worthless in this game. I'm going to start off by deleting, deleting everything. What you see here is you have unfinished brigades. You have cavalry, which I'm not going to use. You're going to have three infantry brigades in a division. You're going to have armor brigades composed of... Where, where the armor brigades here? Armored brigades composed of motorized and two light armors this this is not the way to go also they, they also don't come with any upgrades to them so you know what we're gonna do even though that some of these panzer brigades are really um really experienced i'm uh, deleting everything deleting everything and then i'm gonna go through the country and remove all the forts you do not need forts as germany forts will not help you win world war ii as germany if you need to rely on forts you probably already lost that means the Allies have gotten here, there's no way you're pushing them back. There is no Battle of the Bulge event, there's nothing to really help you if the Allies get that far. So the whole point is you don't need forts. As pretty much any country, including France, you can get rid of all your forts in the custom game, build up a ton of units, and invade Germany as soon as your neutrality gets low enough. That is the best and most sound way to defeat Germany. You know, is when they try to get the Sudetenland from Czechoslovakia. Just do it that way. It's ahistorical, but it's the best way to win. Um, so we got all that. Now I'm going to show you how I like to build my units. So we're going to go uh, infantry first. You start off with three brigades and a strength of 9,000. You don't need three infantry brigade brigades. What you need is two. This is plenty of strength to get you by. Then you're going to want to get artillery and anti-tank. Up against tank divisions, if you go with the standard three infantry and one artillery, which is what I always did, and I always lost against the Soviet Union using, Soviet Union using this combination, but what happens here is your units have no piercing. They cannot pierce the armor that the Soviet Union has. You only have... Uh, where's the piercing? You only have three piercing. With anti-tank weapons, you now have seven. Okay, this will let you stand up against light armor and medium armor. Okay, this is a lot better, plus it saves you manpower, which is very essential in the game. Especially when you build them as reserves, it also saves you, I see. Build as reserves. Always, always, all the way, always build as reserves. That's very important. So we're going to start off with, um, just give me a second here, I want to count out this, because 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I always like to play 7 here, to 7 infantry brigades, and then just build an entire army, so we're going to get 7 of these just to fill up our borders on Poland, just because I don't feel like dealing with them later. <clears throat> also, in a custom game, 
never ever build an HQ. Why? Why is that? Because look at it. It saves you IC to build them outside. They cost you nothing in game uh, in the um, in the regular game, but in here it costs you IC points. It costs you IC points. So don't bother building your order of battle here. It doesn't. It's worth this. Oops. Got a fort there to move. Um, yeah, just don't do it. Okay, so now we're going to build 25. This is an entire army. I'll explain order of battle later, later but, I mean, it's basically... I, I don't really focus that much on micromanagement. I like to basically set everything up, let the AI handle the armies, because honestly, I cannot micromanage this stuff. I have to be managing to make sure that my convoys are safe and my industry is safe from air raids, I, I need, my focus needs to be at, elsewhere besides the front. Uh, I could also run the game at speed 3, but I'm way too lazy to do that. So anyway, we have an army here, and we're also going to build an army on the western front. So we're going to do that now. And with this strategy, you're going to have a lot more units than 1936 Germany would actually start off with. You have a formidable fighting force, so that you can back your uh, claims. I mean, obviously, the, the early game against France, and especially Poland, is incredibly easy. The low, Poland, the Low Countries, Czechoslovakia, all this stuff, wiped out in probably a month or two. <clears throat> That's not what I'm really worried about. Everything, everything, everything culminates in the battle for the Soviet Union, okay? If you do not defeat them quickly, you will lose the game. Case in point. 1943 rolls along, the Allies launch an invasion here. You don't have enough troops, enough troops to cover it. You're busy fighting over here. You're busy fighting over here. You're going to get a World War II scenario on your hands. A two-front war. Not fun. Really, you need to wipe them out fast. And honestly, I never get to Stalingrad. I only usually take Leningrad and Moscow, first of all. That's usually what I get. And especially with my allies of Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria, and Italy, they all they all kind of help me push push the front and Japan is of course. Okay, so now for our Panzer divisions, you really could go there. Are, there are a couple camps on this one. I like to go armor, motorized tank destroyer, engineer. This allows for you to have a decent strength, uh, same as your infantry, and good combined arms. I forgot to tell you about combined arms. Runs. So basically, these are just more combat modifiers in battle that allow you uh, to, you know, have the more combat efficiency, I guess. Well, combat efficiency is different, but, you know. So, basically, this um, just allows you to fight battles better, and um, strength really is not that important in this game. I, I really never find strength being a factor. Um, um, your divisions would only really be under strength if um, they get constantly bombed, out of manpower, and for me, you're not going to run out of manpower, at least in vanilla. Um, but this is good because engineers, armor is dead if it can't cross rivers. It still is not, it's still not fun to cross rivers as armor, but as you can see, without engineers, <clears throat> it's just a lot worse. It's 65%, and now it's only 48.7%. Um, so it's a lot better. Plus, it's defense across rivers is better basically get engineers in your brigades. It's it's pretty essential. And as infantry, when you get five brigades, you're going to put engineers in there too, because they also have a river penalty because of the artillery and anti-tank. So we're going to save this, and we're going to get as many as we can. We're gonna get, we can get six, which is not that many to start off with, but we're definitely going to be getting a little more later on. Also, you want to place your units, at least in a custom game, on uh, the border with France right away. Right away. Because as soon as you start the game, you can activate reoccupation of the, line, or of the Rhine land, which gives you some nice effects. Hmm. Okay, so now I have some IC left over. I'm going to build up the infrastructure. Because infrastructure in this game is very important. I just like to have everything green. When it's all green, I'm satisfied. Of course, Russia is never all green, but once you conquer it, but, um, you know, 
Beckers can't be choosers, I guess. And you're not really going to be watching any invasion out of Russia. So the Air Force in its current state <coughs> is okay. <coughs> and you have three bomber, three fighters and eight bombers. Really, at the start of the game, I don't want to be spending IC on upgrades. So I'm just going to delete these and rebuild them. So we're going to be building three interceptors. Oh, also, let me just feed your forces. This basically automatically assigns things to the HPs. That just cleans up this. I'm going to rename this to P. I. And we're going to be building. Oops, not that. We're going to be building eight tactical bombers. And we have one IC point. Extra. And this is going to be the Luft Float, which means Fleet I, and the Luft Float I, I. Second one. I know my Roman numerals. Yeah, but the Luft Waffe is different than a Luft Float. That's just uh, a flotilla, or that's just a smaller wing. So now we're going to combine all this together. We're going to start off by getting, I think we're going to be getting two carriers to start off with. Actually, we're going to be getting one carrier to start off with. The Graf Zeppelin. And then everything else is going to be a light cruiser. Actually, no, I think we're going to be getting another carrier, because honestly, it takes forever to build carriers. So why not just get your carrier count up now? And we'll just focus on um, that later. Okay, so with the rest of this, we're going to be also we're going to be working on our uh, infrastructure. Okay. You have 17 left. Let's see if I remove one uh, one infrastructure from here. So yeah, 15 IC, that's that's fine. We're good. Okay, we're gonna rebase these two carriers. I'm just gonna do this to make everything go to the order of battle. We're going to start the reoccupation liner and we're gonna automate trade. Go to our pol politics, okay. So, Wilhelm Frick is the Minister of Security, get goals. He has m more leadership, and that's awesome for techs and premature females. You want more IC, uh, you want goals for now, but you're going to get someone else there. Espionage, supply throughput, supply consumption. Um, okay, that's good. Now, you have some policies you can enact, or efficient laws. Three year draft and mix industry. Do not activate them. Do not ever activate them right now. Because right now, when you build units, it's cheaper to build them under a two-year draft and even a volunteer army. I wouldn't recommend going that far. But also, the cons for this especially, do not get it because you have less consumer goods during peacetime and, um, fewer de uh, and more less daily descent change. This means that you have more IC that's free to spend on building units. So do not get mixed industry. Your IC efficiency will obviously be higher, but it's not worth it. So we're going to spend all of our stuff on raising our national unit. Actually, supporting our ruling party. That's what I'm just mad now. And none in officers and just a bit in... And all, we're going to put everything in espionage. So now. We got all this. Now what we're going to do <coughs> is right away, we're going to go to the Soviet Union and the Majors. And we're going to disrupt their national unity. 
and put one in counter espionage. This will make it e easier to uh, defeat them later on. Um, okay. So, now we're gonna get to building. We're gonna get 20 radar stations. Uh, a stack of 10 on each, on each side. Um, gonna get a rocket test site. And the only reason why I want to get a rocket test site is because of this. You can get, okay, first of all, you need rocket test sites to get the rocket engine, and you need the rocket engine to get the theoretical jet engine, but that's important later. You need the rocket engine to get this, which leads to the flying bomb, which leads to the strategic rocket, which leads to these techs. But this is what I really want. A surface-to-air missile. This allows you to have proficial, a provincial AA efficiency of plus 200%. That is, like, a ton of these techs. So, really, when Britain comes bombing you, you have surface-to-air missile, their planes are just going to be shot down like nobody's business, so you won't even have to worry about their planes coming to get you anymore. That is, if you haven't already um, invaded Britain by that time. So we've gotten that. We're going to build four of these, just to even it out. And we have no more IC to spend, so we're just going to start the game off. Uh, speed five. Okay, we're about halfway through, so we have 15 minutes left. Okay, so now we have some more te uh, tech to spend. We're just going to put it all on the esp espionage right now. And once we get up to 99, we're going to pull out all of it in espionage, and we're going to focus on techs. And we're going to research them ahead of time. Anything that's more than two years at a time, so it's 1936 right now, Anything, any 1938 techs are considered ahead of time. So we're going to be encroaching on 99 or 100 very soon. Okay, so we got that. Let's get techs faster, or uh, spies faster that way. 95, 97, 99, okay, so we're good there. Now we're gonna put everything into research. So now we're gonna get small arms, um, you're gonna get your artillery and anti-tank, your medium armor, especially your light tank, your escorts, your capital ships, uh, industry, you wanna put your industry at the top, these are probably your most important decks. You really don't need to focus on these too much. Also, you want to get nuclear research at the top. Just so later when you invade the United States, you can, you know, nuke them. Because honestly, invading the United States is hard as any country. <coughs> Uh, doing it as Japan is insane. Uh, really, you need nukes. That's that's probably the best way to go about doing it. Okay. So now that we got all that, yeah, I don't worry if it's out of date, especially when you're like Germany you have tons of leadership to, to waste. So you might as well spend it on something useful. The train runs on time. I thought we were based into the characters. There we go. So right now, of course, our fleet is nowhere near, the, you know, capable of taking on the UK or France or the Soviet Union. But we're gonna get there. Let's go to politics. So right now, supporting the ruling party really just helps organization, which has an effect on this. The more organized you are, the better your popularity is. And the less organized these are. But once 1937 comes through your foreign minister, you can get Jokheim von Ribbentrop, <coughs> which uh, gives you more ruling party support, which helps your popularity. Again, I tend to go with the classic uh, Germany cabinet of 1930s. Yeah, so, oh, also, one more thing. I forgot to start building on my infrastructure. Yeah, that's, that's really important. Uh, 
Okay. Hold down the F key to do to do that. Just to build them all at once. And bring it up to the top of the queue, because <clears throat> I just want to get them out of the way. <coughs> wow, I have a cough. I did not have a cough earlier. Actually, today I had a two exams. I had a, a history exam and a math exam. Confident I got 100 on both. You know, you got parents saying you should study, but um, I didn't study. But I'm still confident I got 100. Oh. Do not take my advice on studying. Take my advice on video games. Do not take it on studying, because just, just study. Oh, crap! Uh, I also forgot one more thing. Jeez, when I'm playing a Let's Play, I need to build my bombers. I want to get these practicals warmed up. <coughs> and if you start building it now, it's going to be a lot faster later. So I already have medium bombers and light practical, light aircraft practical. I can't speak light practical up, but I want to get them up higher. And I have the aircraft, I have none, so I want to get that up too. Oh, I have five ships, wow. We're going to be going ship heavy later. We're harder, not smarter. That's right. We're going to be getting more uh, spies. Just to compensate for the fact that the Soviet Union are probably killing them off like flies. Okay. I don't care much about trade, that's why I set the AI to focus on it, because honestly, I cannot micromanage that stuff. Actually, wait a second, are we exporting any metal? Uh, no, we're not. That's fine. Right. Yeah, the early, uh, early years of the game are kind of dull. Nothing much you can do about it. You're just gonna move these back into the cores. Oh wait. Okay. Oh, the Spanish Civil War. Lovely. Oh, oh, oh. Da 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 da. I have one. More. I forgot. Jeez, I'm an idiot. Uh, focus on supporting uh, our party in Austria. It allow you to annex them faster. I can get it sometimes by March, because if you look at the Angelus of Austria, you need to have a, you need to have 40 organization or 40 popularity. So that's what I need to annex Austria. So it's going to happen March 1937 or March 19. It's going to happen March 1938 anyway. But I think I think it should happen. I think it's going to happen March 1937. Space. Maybe because I started it late a bit after that, but um, yeah. Let's check in the 51.7%. But they get Stalin's purges, which increases their uh, national unity later on, so it's not going to be that low for the entire game. Because if it was, then we would obviously just wipe the floor with them. All these techs finishing up. Brilliant. We don't care about techs right now, though, because they're all needed. <coughs> They're all ahead of schedule, though. Like, if we have 75. Okay. Radar station, yes. We're gonna put them... Uh, we're gonna put it in Dusseldorf. I just love that name. Dusseldorf! Have you ever heard such a better name than Dusseldorf? I'm mean, we're gonna put it in... Coinsburg. Oh, same with our rocket test site. Didn't know that finished up either, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I think we're going to get some more light cruisers. I'm gonna get ten. Republican seems, Spain seems to be winning, but uh, looks can be deceiving. Honestly, they look to be about even, judging off. Starting in the starting territory. Ah, we can work a supply. Get working on another interceptor. 
So basically, as you build more of the same thing, their industry, IC cost becomes less, and the time it takes to build is less. So that's that's overall a great thing. You can get more units cheaper faster. You can get more units cheaply and more quickly. National Spain is winning. Not hard to tell, not hard to uh, imagine. They won in real life. If you didn't know that. For all you non-history nerds out there, I'm a major history nerd. I I had to write two essays today, and boy did I go overboard on it just because of my like sheer love of history. My friends say I should be a history teacher. Um, yeah. I don't know if I want to be, but yeah, totally, I, I could be a history teacher. Just like, every time I start talking about something history related, I start screaming because it's so freaking awesome, just like... <sighs> yeah. Okay, and now it's 1937, so all the tax except for the nuclear research should be up to date. Yep, that's right. And I think we have everything else, let's get this. All good. Um, so yeah, just more sitting and waiting. Not that big a deal. <clears throat> hmm. More tactical bombers. Bring those to the top. I really need to start focusing on that land text, the Atlantex, the Wehrmachts, but that can come later. Along with my entire organization, the army, I don't need to organize my army at all until later. Look at this. Just by getting all this, you can see Russia's front lines. You can see all this stuff. They're pretty powerful, but they are really out of date. Our technological and armor superiority will crush them. Watch this. I see cost just went to 16 to 14 just by these creation of these two new panzer units. And we're gonna get more panzer units. Because everyone loves panzers. Even Santa Claus. Take my word for that on that because they probably he probably doesn't probably doesn't even exist. I don't know, no one's ever seen him. Mm. National Spain is clearly winning now. They've captured Madrid, so Republican Spain is just toast. Mm hmm. Oh, we got another tech. What tech was that? Agricultural advance. This basically just helps out your manpower. Which is really nice. We already have a million men in our manpower pool. Each of these stands for a thousand men. If you didn't know. No, I do. And we have more units to deploy. More panzers. Lovely. And another fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A heart, I know Hearts of Iron 3, when you first start playing it, it can be a really kind of frightening game, you know, there's a lot of stuff, there's so many menus and panels, and you don't know what's going on, but honestly, after a while, it's just like, there's a cert there, there are certain things you do now, and then it's a step-by-step -step process, really. And once you figure it out, you can be good at it and just completely dominate every everyone. And that's fun. Dominate, de dominating people is fun. And don't feel bad if you're one of those people that's like 
doesn't want to play as Germany because it's like a, um, you know, oh, Germany's evil, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're fascist, but it's a, it's a video game. It's not like you're pro advocating Nazism or anything like that. It's just a game. So if you have stigma over that because it's a game, well, then I'm sorry. It doesn't even have a swastika here. I, I mean, I, I personally don't think there's anything wrong with putting the Hindu symbol for peace in a flag. But just because there's so much stigma surrounding the fact that it's associated with Hitler, you, you can't do it. And I understand that. But there are mods out there that let you post uh, the actual German flag. And also Italy's flag is not accurate. Italy's flag is something else. Like there's an eagle on it or something. I'm not. Nuclear physics advance. Didn't mean for my commentary to go into a social political uh, rant there. Oh, yes, we need another fire, of course. But yeah, I just kind of did. So let's check our upgrade status. <coughs> They're upgrading rather nicely. Also, if you set it to uh, to your draft, it upgrades cheaper. The upgrades are cheaper, which is always nice. Uh, up-to-date infantry, isn't it lovely? Now, you may be wondering, if you're a person that knows how to survive, why aren't you recruiting officers to get them above 140%? Well, to your drafts, uh, hold on a second. If you, to your draft is semi-inefficient at recruiting officers. You get this, you get officer recruitment of plus 25%. And I'm not going to start recruiting officers until I activate that. I'm not going to activate that until I'm done building units. Or at least until it's closer to the start of the war. So now we invited them to the pact. And really, you want to invite them as soon as possible because it gives them a faster research efficiency. Which in the long run probably won't affect it too much, but it's nice to help them out as much as possible. So look at how far away the radar extends. It extends... 1,215 kilometers. 1,215 kilometers. In fact, it might be even further if you're going to go from down here. 1,295 kilometers. So you can go all the way from the bottom of Greece to Danzig with your radar. It's really awesome. And you can see all of this stuff right here. You can see they have infantry and whatever. It's just so nice. Because look at how many units they have. If we invaded from the south, boom, right to Warsaw, they're crushed. <laughs> Let's check on Austria. Fascists lost a lot of support. Getting? I believe that's pronounced Gehring. Uh, can we have strategic bombers? Um, so yeah, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this part. It's been about a half an hour, I don't know why I set my limit arbitrarily at half an hour, but I do. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of this Hearts of Iron 3 Germany Let's Play. I hope you will continue to watch it, and uh, comment, rate, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.